This video is going to show how you download MPLAB X IDE and the compiler XC8. So I'll go through all of this with you. So to begin with, you should go to the website listed in the lab manual, which is microchip.com, and we're going to want to get the IDE first. So MPLAB X IDE. So click on Tools and Software and come down to MPLAB X IDE. Click on that and it takes you to this page. Now, scrolling down here, it's a bunch of interesting information. We don't necessarily need any of this. Here's the part that's actually important. So down here, mid-page, you've got a section that has various tabs, and you want to be on the Downloads tab. And right here, we've got three versions of MPLAB X IDE. So there's a version here for Windows, another version here for Linux, and another version down here for Mac. Notice that these are all about one gig, so it's a big program. It's going to take a while to download. So I've got a Windows machine. I'm going to click this link to begin the download. And in my web browser, it asks me if I want to save the file. So I say save, and it's going to start downloading. So like I said, this is a big program. It's going to take a while. So I'm going to use a little bit of video trickery to speed things up for you. OK, so now my download has finished, and I'm going to now run this program. So this is the installer. So I double click on this, and now the installer is starting up. So here's the install wizard, and I'll start by clicking Next, and we need to accept the agreement. Click Next again, and I'm OK with letting it install at the default location, so I click Next again. Now on this screen, there's some stuff you can do to make the installation a little smaller on your computer. We're not going to need the IPE. We just need the IDE. So you can deselect the IPE. And our chip is an 8-bit MCU. So I'm going to deselect these guys. So now I'll click Next again. And it says it's now ready to begin installing. So I'll click Next again. And as I said, this is a really big program. It's going to take a while to install. So again, I'll use a little bit of video trickery to speed this up for you. OK, so the installation is finished, and it's now asking me, would you like to install this device software? So I'll click Install. And now we're ready to finish the installation. But there's a few things here we should read. So first it notes that the XC compilers are not installed along with the IDE. So the MPLAB X IDE is where we're going to be creating our computer code. But in order to translate that into something that a microchip can understand, we also need a compiler. So that's what we're going to need to go and get next. So I'm going to leave this first one checked for sure, because it's going to take me back to that microchip.com website to download the compiler I need. Now these other two, I don't think I need them, so I'm going to deselect these. And now I'm going to click Finish. And sure enough, it takes me back to my web browser to get a compiler. This page turns out to be a little bit tricky to navigate, so let me show you what the trick is. We scroll down, and it's telling us a bunch of stuff about the compilers that we don't seem to really need to know. And you get to this location here, and it's a bunch of documents. And the thing that is subtle is that up here, these are tabs. So they're really subtle and hard to see. So the documentation one is the default screen, but we actually want the compiler download. So that's this one, and scrolling down a little bit, we see there's an XC8 compiler for Windows here. There's an XC8 compiler for Linux and one for Mac as well. So make sure you get the XC8 one, not the XC16 or the XC32. So XC8 for whichever operating system you have. I've got a Windows machine, so I'm going to click this one. And it asks me to save the file, so I'll do that. And this won't take as long as MPLAB X did, but I'll still fast forward you to the point where it's downloaded. And now it's downloaded, so I will run it. And here's the setup wizard, so I'll start by clicking Next, and as usual, accept the agreement, click Next again, and we want the free installation, so make sure that is selected. Click Next again, the default location should be fine, so click Next again, and here, the first one says apply settings to all users of this machine. So if you've got more than one account on your computer, and you want all of them to be able to use the compiler, then you'd leave this selected. I don't have anybody else who's going to be using my machine, so I'm going to deselect it. The second one says add XC8 to the path environment variable. That can be useful, so I recommend that you do select this one. Then click Next again. 
It says it's now ready to begin installing, so I click Next, and now it's going to start installing the compiler for me. And again, this will take a moment, so I'm going to fast forward you to the end of this. Okay, and now the installation is complete and this screen pops up. You don't need to do anything here, so you don't need to activate any license. You can just click Next and then click Finish. So now we've installed MPLabX IDE and also the XC8 compiler. So now we should be ready to actually use MPLabX to compile programs. So let's test that now. Let me minimize this. And somewhere on your desktop, you should now have an MPLabX IDE icon. So double click that to open it up. And now it's opened up. One thing that you won't have initially is this project in the corner because I loaded this up earlier. So let's check that everything works by making sure that this project still compiles. So I click the hammer icon and we'll see if we get a successful build. And we do. So that means that our compiler and MPLabX are communicating with each other correctly.